Hassan enjoyed the freedom to choose almost any spot he wished, just to sit and read any book that he wanted. His mind was completely focused. Charles, Q, and Tats had spent the afternoon watching the fights and drinking beer. Walking home, they were pretty confident and cocky. Male bravado was being smacked around pretty good. When the three of them got together, they would take on anyone. Not any three, but any one. Well, I was just taking a leisurely walk through the park and I was reading a book. Uh, usually when I do read a book, I have my head down and my book concentrating on the book. And I was really into the book. Um, as I was walking through the park, uh, I didn't even know if there was anybody in the park. It has to do with how a person walks. Uh, with their head down, perhaps they have headphones on, they're not looking around in their surroundings. These are primary targets that attackers look for. It's the confidence level of your gait. It's how you look around, letting a person know you see them so that hypothetically you can describe them should something happen to you. Aggravated assault crimes accounts for 62.1% of violent crimes. Head down, not paying attention to his surroundings, Hassan doesn't quite get what signal that sends to everyone around him. It is arrogance. Move for me. What I'm doing is important. It is a small offense, but it is enough for this crew of limited intelligence. When environmental arrogance and lack of awareness combine, violent problems can arise. All of a sudden, my book just slipped out of my hand. I looked up and there's three guys there. I froze. I couldn't do anything. I, I, I froze and I was terrified. At that point, he should have, again, either uh, uh, ran away, ran across the street, go to a nearby house and to avoid. The last thing he should have done was stop and confront them. That was his biggest mistake. He didn't see his attackers coming, so he couldn't avoid them before the altercation. A potent mix of testosterone and mob mentality could have been avoided, but if not avoided, certainly a defense could have been a part of his strategy instead of the turtling his mind came up with in panic. I basically covered up, uh, trying to make a shelf for myself. I was really scared. Um, I just started to panic, didn't know what to do at the moment, and I thought the best thing I could do at that time was just to cover up. Um, and they just basically beat me to a pulp. Brutal idea. You can be overpowered by more than one person. This is something that you have to be aware of. You can only minimize your risk. You can't remove it. He should have clearly just ran away. It's not the male psyche to... to run to avoid confrontation, but in this case, he sh clearly should have just done that. Uh, it's the old saying, pick your fights, and this is not the case for it. These people could have been armed. He doesn't know that. They could have knives, firearms. Again, doesn't know that. He should have just clearly ran. Coming up next on City Commando. A potent mix of testosterone and mob mentality could have been avoided. But if not avoided, certainly a defense could have been part of his strategy instead of the turtling his mind came up with in panic. Here we have a scene, a gentleman minding his own business, walking down a pathway. Now let's look at another way the story might have ended, the way a city commando might have ended it. I'm walking around minding my own business, knocks the book out of my hand. I take the closest attacker first with an eye jab, stomp to him, what they call a straight blast into his face, capture him, a quick elbow and spin him around. I block the path between my attackers and him so they only come in one at a time. Now I can finish them off at will. Step one, eye gouge. The first rule to fighting multiple opponents is don't. 
You fight them one at a time. How do you do this? Well, I don't need that. As they approach, the first strike I throw is an eye jab. It's very quick, it's effective, it's simple, and it pretty much stops this gentleman in his tracks. When there's multiple opponents, they're more likely to let their friends finish up if they get injured. The first technique that our defender uses is a simple finger jab, or Bill G, uh, a strike to the eye. It requires absolutely no power. It's just a distraction, yeah, like a speck of dust in somebody's eye to make them flinch, to make them take a step back and buy us a moment, buy us some time, buy us some space between that person and our next attacker. Anytime uh, things are being projected at our eyes, it has a tendency to, to make us go back. Um, if, with a particular an eye gouge, certainly a very sensitive, but it will cause a, a significant amount of pain too. Step two, front kick. As the second attacker ap approaches, I let out a quick stomp, a little intercepting side kick to the, his closest target, which happens to be that lead leg. A shot to, when our second attacker steps in, with all the weight on that lead leg, we attack it with a stomping side kick, potentially dislocating or popping that knee right out of the socket. Step three, multiple straight blast. One attacker left. So, so far, I've gone one, two, and now I'm on the third attacker. I meet him with what we call refer to as a straight blast. I'm running into him and punching at the same time. Our third attacker rushes in and we counter him with what we call a straight blast or a Jik Chung Choi. This is a running chain punch. Drives our opponent back, hits him with the flurry of a linebacker or a sprinter right off the line. From there we kick into our barrage with elbows, knees and headbutts, our finishing tools. And one by one pick off our remaining attackers. Multiple opponents, the city commando way.